Heidelbergensis. I'm a high double up, I get in that. Nope. Well, hello there. I've had an amazing idea. It's all thanks to Plum Bella, who does Sims content, if you're into that thing link in the description. So they basically had this, like they have a bajillion Sims ideas for their videos. And so they used this like spinning wheel to decide what video to do next. And I was like, I have a bajillion ideas about cryptozoology. I want to do that. So I made my own one. As you can see here, there are many questions about cryptozoology that just sort of ping into my head at random hours of the day. And I need to put them in somewhere. So I've put them in here and I'm not, stunned by choice anymore and I'm just gonna let the wheel decide what video I should do next. So let's spin. All right so here is all of the things ever and let's go! Is Bigfoot actually Homo Heidelbergensis? I need a caveat that I wrote these questions like over the last Seven years? So I have no memory of this. I have no idea what Hodo Hobo Homo Hyberlensis is. Well, let's discover the answer together. So let's start with who dis. Basically, I've done some research now, I know the answers, and I'm ready to give them to you. That was weird. <laughs> Homo Heidelbergensis. Homo Heidelbergensis, I get it? Nope. Homo Heidelbergensis is an extinct species of human that lived in Africa, Europe, and Western Australia. <laughs> Asia. Asia. <laughs> Not Australia. Sorry. Derp. Approximately between 700,000 and 200,000 years ago. Okay, so a while ago. Note that for pros and cons later of whether it's Bigfoot. <laughs> blah blah blah. It used to be the common ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. These guys. Had a large brain, it tells me the centimeters of that brain, but I don't care, you don't care. Sort of looked human-y in the skull, prominent brow ridge, that's important. Also, larger and more robust than modern humans, so again, important. Oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, bad thing. Averaged around 5.9 inches? That's small. Bigfoot big. So, anyway. <laughs> Apparently it was really adaptive, it lived in a bunch of different ranges of Environments? I couldn't think of that word. And I'm doing a degree on the environment, basically. It's fine. <laughs> Believed to be hunters and gatherers, used stone tools, and even possibly spears. Again, it's not sounding very big footy, but we'll go to pros and cons later. Ooh, there's also evidence that they were social and that they had like burials for the dead, which I guess depending on what you believe Bigfoot does could be a pro or a con. Oh, they used fire. Okay. I've never, I might have to check this, but I've never heard of a report of a Bigfoot using fire. If anyone has ever heard of that, please comment and link me in the comments. Cause like, I don't think Bigfoot uses fire. I guess you're probably asking why on earth did past Megan ask this? Cause it seems kind of not like they're gelling. Homo Heidelbergensis and Bigfoot seem pretty different, but let's, let's go for pros and cons. Okay. Why are they similar and why are they probably different? Okay. Let's start with how they're similar. So we only know about Homo heidelbergensis due to their skeletal remains. And what we know from those remains is limited in some ways. For example, we believe that these guys had similar levels of body hair to humans like today, but obviously Bigfoot is way more furry. They could have de-evolved, you know, or evolved to have more hair if they're going more remote and staying away from us cheeky Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. They found their own niche and they were like, well, this niche is kind of cold. We need lots more body hair. And they sort of de-evolved or evolved to have more fur. Or it's possible that the original Homo heidelbergensis, again, can't say it properly, did have fur. We can't be confident that they didn't have full fur, but most likely they were just like us. The evolutionary history of humans and human-like things like Bigfoot is an ongoing research. We don't have all the answers by far. So as we discover more things about thing, you know, Homo heidelbergensis, we can shed more light on these interesting questions. Here's another four. So why did Homo heidelbergensis go extinct? Or did they? Really, we don't have an answer for why they went extinct. 
It could have been biology, territory, you know, like Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, like, battled them out into extinction. Or maybe they didn't go extinct, and they de-evolved into Bigfoot. It's possible. It's a possibility. Okay, let's talk about the against column. Why is Bigfoot not Homo heidelbergensis? Like, what evidence is there against that theory? Well, there's quite a bit. <laughs> The lovely Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who we all know and adore, <laughs> believes that if Homo heidelbergensis became Bigfoot, it would have had to have regressed. Because Bigfoot is way too wild and, sorry, uncultured to be Homo heidelbergensis as we knew it. So it's not impossible, we've seen species regress and de-evolve, but it's a little bit strange. And then we look at physical description. Now we know what Heidelbergensis looks like because of fossils, skeletons, things like that. And we know what Bigfoot looks like because of anecdotal evidence, eyewitnesses. Of course, there are some similarities. We've got that prominent brow ridge that I mentioned earlier, and we've got that they're humanoid <laughs> and primitive looking. Is that, is that offensive to Bigfoot? I don't know, sorry. Tell me if I'm being offensive to Bigfoot. But there are a lot of differences between these two species. I'm just gonna call them species, I'm doing it, you can't stop me. Number one is the cranial shape. Bigfoot has that classic cone head shape. Homo heidelbergensis had a nice sort of rounded dome. Different! Bigfoot has those really long gangly arms. Much bigger than on humans or on Homo heidelbergensis. They had much more proportionate arms to their bodies. Then there's the footprint or the foot structure itself. This is a little bit iffy this one because there's different foot casts of Bigfoot and I'm just going off the classic most common shape. But if we look at what we know about the Heidelbergensis foot and the Bigfoot foot, foot foot, they are different. They're just different. So Bigfoot, all his toes are the same length and they're really wide and flat. Whereas Heidelbergensis, are kind of like modern humans. They're more thin, they have one distinct big toe, and then like the little toes kind of peter out next to them. They also have a really distinct arch, which if you look at Bigfoot casts, no arches to be seen really. Then we have the body size, which I alluded to earlier, but basically Bigfoot is big. Heidelbergensis, not so big. He was only like six foot on a good day. We've already talked about body fur as well, but that's kind of it. But at the end of the day, is Bigfoot Homo heidelbergensis? I don't think so. I don't know what past Megan was thinking. I guess some people have thrown this out there, like Jeff Meldrum, and we all respect him, but I agree with him. Like, if it is, like, the lineage has gone heidelbergensis to Bigfoot, they would have had to regress, like, a lot, and in b bizarre ways that don't really make sense for what we know about evolution. So I think Bigfoot is it's just its own thing. It's not Heidelbergensis, it never was. And there is your answer to this bizarre question that past Megan thought would make a good video. So what do you think? If you have cryptozoology questions that you want me to answer, add it to the wheel, put them in the, com the thingy, the thing with the text down below, and I will look at that and add it to my wheel. So you never know, your question could come up in a future video. It's all chance and luck. Anyway, that's that. Thank you so much. Have you liked this sort of thing? Because it's fun, especially spinning the wheel. <laughs> Coming up soon is the part two of the Kangaroo Valley Panther, which we had the truck camera footage that I'm very excited to talk about and show you. Anyway, bye.